Hello there, people of YouTube land. This is the Dodo Wrestling Fan here today to count down my top five favorite first levels in gaming. Now, this is a very important topic indeed because, in my eyes, a first impression can make me love the game with a passion or make me want to summon Zeus's beard and bark out at the moon at how crappy the game is. I know that made zero sense, but you get my point that having a good first level or boss is very important. So here they are, my top 5 favorite first levels in gaming. And I'm not about to make a fool out of myself with a bad joke or pun before I say start the countdown. Well, I didn't know it was gonna hurt your feelings, dude. But I'm not doing it. Before anyone else cries, start the countdown. Number 5 is from a licensed game of all things, but that particular licensed game is a true hidden gem, and that's SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottoms first area, Jellyfish Fields. Now, SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom is a giant ripoff of Super Mario 64, but in my opinion, Battle for Bikini Bottom does Mario 64 a hundred times better. And you know what? After playing through Jellyfish Fields, you'll feel the exact same way. This area is jam-packed with content, whether it's a robot rush or making your way through the cave with Patrick, or fighting the King Jellyfish, I guarantee you're gonna have a blast. Also, a shout out to the funny as hell writing, but I digress. It does what any first level should do, teach you the controls and actions of the game, and gets you just hyped to see what's next. Play the game if you haven't, you won't regret it. Number 4 is Central Hybrid from Mega Man X. Now yes, yes, I know, this is cliche as um... Uh, oh yeah, me making a saving grace joke in my countdowns, but there's no way it couldn't make the list. Don't give me that look. It just had to be. Now, can we start acting like adults now? Anywho, let's talk about the level, and it's really good. Seeing the fleeing cars in the background adds a really good touch that something fishy is going down on this highway. And I must say that the music in the stage, the music that you're hearing in the background right now, always gets me pumped up. Just wall jump, shoot enemies, and have a rock and roll time. See what I did there? Because in Japan, Mega Man's rock band and his sister's name is Roll, so I said have a rock and roll time. Yeah, it really wasn't that clever, but I'm still proud. Now, more about the level. Like I said about Jellyfish Fields, the same can be said about Central Highway. It perfectly tells you about the controls and moves of the game in a fun, action-packed way. This level would be higher if it weren't for the boss that you can't beat at the end. I beat stuff like that. It's pure poppycock, horse pucky, and snickerdoodle. Oh yeah, when I say snickerdoodle, I mean business. Now, on to number three. Number three isn't just a level, it's a world. It's Twilight Town from Kingdom Hearts 2, and yes, I chose Twilight Town, the world with really boring vampires and wolves. No, seriously, how do you make vampires on cool Twilight? Over, say, Traverse Town from the in from Kingdom Hearts 1 or Dream Drop Distance, mainly to the fact of Traverse Town never has great boss battles, but Twilight Town has two great boss battles in the Twilight Thorn and the Battle Against Axel, which, if you have played 358 slash over two days, like I have, this battle is actually pretty sad to see, but then again, you do get to have fun with Oak Keeper and Oblivion, so that evens things out. Another thing I liked about this world is the fact that the game throws you a screwball with the fact that you're not Sora, you're Roxas, and playing as a different character to start out Kingdom Hearts 2's epic adventure is a breath of fresh air. But in the end, this was also the very first world I played in Kingdom Hearts, and your first anything is always special. Also, the world's music is relaxing. It's like listening to Kenny Loggins. Heal the laser Loggins! Well, okay. It doesn't sound like Loggins, but don't deny the love for Loggins. But now, let's get back to Twilight Town. I love the look of the place. It's got some good action, good music, and a good but sad story. Seriously, you have to have a heart of stone not to get the feels from Roxas' summer vacation ending early. Number two is a little more upbeat, and number two takes us to The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. Ah, yeah, adventure! Sorry, I get really excited when I talk about this game, but number two is the first dungeon of the game, and that's Dragon Roost Cavern. Now, I've always had a soft spot for fire slash lava levels in gaming, and what better way, for me at least, to start out a game with a fire or lava dungeon? Dragon Roost Cavern is filled with really clever puzzles, like the one where you have to throw a rock at two bombs on the wall, or the one where you have to throw the fire stick at the wall to get the small key, and so forth. Lots of good puzzles in this place. I also really like the item in this dungeon, the grappling hook. With this item, Link becomes Tarzan. 
But let me tell ya, the cherry on top of the cake is the boss, Goma. I mean, look at it and tell me it isn't Dennis the Menacing. Wow, that was an awful pun. Bad puns aside, this is just an epic way to kick off my second favorite Zelda game and third favorite game overall. Now folks, I had a really hard time picking, just five, so here are a few honorable mentions. It's time for number one! And number one is City Escape from Sonic Adventure 2. Yes, the level that kicks off my favorite game of all time is number one. Don't kick me, don't get kicked in the name of Sparta. Now, City Escape has everything I could want in the level and more. A super badass intro cutscene that I could repeat every word from, snowboarding when it's the middle of summer down the hills of San Francisco. Oh wait, Central City, my bad. Having so much exciting action that I could just explode! The very memorable gun truck sequence and having one of the most iconic, if not the most iconic, song in all of gaming. City Escape is just amazing. And yeah, you could say I have my nostalgia glasses on really thick, but personally, not to be rude, but if you think that, I don't care. There will never be a first level or just level in general like City Escape. Sega, you done pretty good in the past. This level proves that you can make levels in games like Sonic Adventure 2 again. Make Sonic's 25th anniversary something special. I know you can pull it off, and I'm counting on you. Basically, levels like City Escape make me forget about all the awful things life has for a few minutes, and make me happy, and that's the best thing a game can do. Make me, or you, really happy, and have fun no matter how crappy your day was. And with that, the list has reached its end. Make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. And just as a quick FYI, my next count is going to be huge. It's the top 14 Organization 13 members from Kingdom Hearts. But like I said, like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. This is the Dodo Wrestling Fan, signing out.